Hey, I'm Mary. And I'm Jake. And you're listening to The Fly Angle, the official RDU Airport podcast. We are back. It's episode five of The Fly Angle. We are having a great time. We've had some incredible positive feedback. I mean, is this really our job? You know, I ask myself the same question every day, Mary. (laughs) If you spend any time in an airport, no matter where you work here, you probably ask yourself that, whether it's on the ramp or even here at the airport authority. Exactly. And although recovery remains sluggish, we're still optimistic about where RDU stands in the journey towards recovery. Some really interesting stuff in the data we've been seeing lately. So our air service team, really everybody here at RDU, we always are focused on passenger forecasting, specifically in planements, to understand where travel is going from here. And what we're seeing lately is that capacity levels seem to be improving. Airlines seem kind of bullish on spring travel. Maybe it's because of the more widespread availability of the COVID-19 vaccine, Mm -hmm. our cases going down, whatever it might be. It seems to be really encouraging news for spring season, huh? Yes, absolutely. And another positive note, we added another airline to the mix here at RDU. That's right. Tell us about it. Sun Country will be joining us at RDU. We're really excited about them. They join a number of other carriers who are similar, um, Spirit, Allegiant, Frontier, in providing kind of that extra option for all of our guests, not just the business traveler, but the leisure traveler as well. So families who have not flown in a while and getting ready to do it, they can add Sun Country to the mix. They're starting out with just one route to Minneapolis, but we're really excited to have them. Absolutely. Mark's number 11th, the 11th airline here at RDU. It's just Hard to exciting. Believe, huh? It's just, it's a good feeling to have that growth, you know, and Minneapolis, here we come. Yeah. <laughs> so you want to do some airmail? I think that sounds like a plan. Our uh, airmail question today comes from Benjamin S. Benjamin asks... Prior to the pandemic, where did you see yourself in five years and what were you deeply focused in? What about now? It's a good question, Benjamin. Absolutely. And Benjamin, I have to tell you, when I came on board about a year and a half ago, all we were talking about was Vision 2040. It is nearly a $4 billion plan. It includes projects in the airfield, consolidated rental car facility, terminal programs. And you may remember some of the messaging we had because we were seeing a lot of growth at that time. Yeah, that plan was approved by the FAA in November of 2017, I believe. So, you know, it's about four years ago. And ever since then, we've just been, we had been growing like crazy, talking about managing the busy lines you'd see. They almost went out to the curve on some busy travel days during the summer. Talking about people getting here at least two hours early, which has never changed, by the way. Right, right. (laughs) Now, such a different environment. We're talking about the pandemic response and and how the airport is putting out health and safety measures to make sure that you're you're confident when you fly and talking about our different airport protocols and airline protocols for making sure that people can fly safely and even talking about how we budget for the new the new environment, the new normal, if you will. We've called it our survival budget, but it's been our budget has trimmed down considerably. And Jake and I are members of the communications team. And from a communications angle, we've really had to scale our messaging back and forth from, again, like we mentioned, passenger levels being beyond what we had projected them to now focus messaging about our response to the pandemic and our recovery, because we do expect that the airport will be uniquely positioned to recover. But you know what, Benjamin, the one thing I would leave you with is this. Long-term planning requires long-term thinking, and airports think in, call it 25-year sprints. So the the Vision 2040 plan is a 25-year plan, and it calls for things like replacing our main runway, 5 left, 2 3 right. That's a major project that kind of has eyes beyond just what happens in the next 12 months. We'll be working on that for years. Capital projects still have to move forward. Airports have to always consider how we finance those projects, Mm -hmm. what kind of debt we can take on. Fun topics, right? But that's how airports get built. And we're hopeful that on the other side of the pandemic, there might be some more growth for us. I think there will be some more growth for us. If you remember what it was like 25 years ago, and then think about what it will be like another 20 years from now. So what will 2040 look like here at RDU? Well, look towards the region and how much it's grown in the last couple of decades, and then kind of extrapolate that on, you know, what it could look like 20 years from now, you might not even recognize it. 
Absolutely. And that's a fantastic uh, perspective that you allowed us to tap into, Benjamin. Going back again to working at the airport, it's just really cool to be in a space where constant innovation is taking place and where we have to adapt quickly and respond because there are lots of stakeholders, you know, our passengers, our customers, but then all of the on-site business partners, the authority staff, and it does require a team. It does require a village, but being able to pivot quickly has been instrumental and it's, it's kind of fun to be a part of that process as well. Mary, you want to get into some headlines? Yes, we're happy to announce the return of the World Class Service Awards program. That's a program that recognizes non-authority employees, badge contractors, and RDU volunteers for delivering above and beyond outstanding guest service. So if you've ever been around the terminals and seen somebody from the airlines or from rental cars or even concessionaires wearing a blue lanyard that says World Class Service, that means that they won the World Class Service Award at some point. It's an honor that is taken very seriously here, not just by the airport authority, but really by everybody who works at the airport campus on any given day. So the airport authority's mission and vision and values even talk about us providing world-class service. So that's where the name comes from. But anybody, including authority staff, passengers, people who listen to this podcast, you can, you can nominate anyone at the airport, whether that's an airline employee or a contractor or a volunteer, you can nominate them for the world-class service awards. All you have to do to do that is just go to rdu.com slash world-class, make sure you have their name and where they work. And you could submit a nomination. Yes, there it is. And I'm wishing you all could see Jake right now because he's tugging on his blue lanyard, wishing that it was that one. But you never know, Jake. Mine doesn't say world-class service, but I always try to provide it. We are. Absolutely. <laughs> also, a new TSA directive requires all employees, travelers, and other visitors to RDU to wear a face covering or a mask at all times while at the airport. This is a very serious security measure that they're taking and failure to comply may result in penalties under federal and state law. It is important. And everybody who is listening to this podcast is subject to that, that rule, whether you're an employee or if you are just flying out for business or even for, for leisure, masks are required. One question we've gotten is, you know, how is this different from you know, how it was previously with the state level right. requirement? And the short version is you were required before to wear your mask in the airport. You are still now required to wear your mask in the airport. That hasn't changed. Right. What has changed is just an additional federal layer of enforcement that the TSA has. But in practice, what we're asking everybody to do is from the moment you get out of your car, if you are in a public space at the airport, if you're not actively eating or drinking, for example, would be like one of the few exemptions, you need to have your mask on. That includes when you're getting on the airplane. That includes while you're on the aircraft. We appreciate everybody taking it seriously. You've been doing a great job so far. Absolutely. You can just walk through the terminals and see people wearing their masks pretty diligently. So I like that because that means we get to fly to more places sooner, right? Exactly. And comfort fellow travelers. And if you have questions, we've got a wealth of information on our website, rdu.com. The lower third has a specific mask requirements, a link to the TSA directive and all the information you need to know. But mask up, just make it simple. Mask up when you head to RDU. RDU offers a wide array of shopping and dining options. And you might recall a previous episode when we interviewed our director of concessions, Kimberly Stewart. We discussed the focus that the airport has placed on offering guests a taste and a sense of local flavor. And now beyond that, we are thrilled that we also welcomed a local brewery to the mix. So today we're pleased to welcome to the podcast, Christy Neidset, president and CEO of Raleigh Brewing. Hey, Hi, Christy. Hey there. So nice to be a part of your guys' podcast today. Yeah, we're excited to have you. And as not just as airport fans, but as craft beer fans, we're, we're doubly excited. Even. So <laughs> why don't we kick off by, a just tell us a little bit about how Raleigh Brewing came to be. So Raleigh Brewing was initially in concept form probably in 2010. Took a couple years for us to kind of build it out and build out the entire business plan is what you see here now. Um, we did open March 9th of 2013. So okay, that, so you've got a birthday coming up. Yes, exactly. Our eight-year anniversary is right around the corner. 
We are a 20 barrel production brew house of which we have two tap rooms in and around the Raleigh area, plus another one in the RDU airport. One thing about Raleigh with our brand, what we did initially, of course, having that name Raleigh Brewing is we did take that a step further and all of our core beers and even a lot of our small batch beers have a story, tell a story about Raleigh and the surrounding area. So it's a little bit of history on each can and each beer we make. That seems so apropos and yeah. kind of leads to the question I would have, how did you land at the airport? There was, it was actually through relationships. So we worked with um, Uptown Airport Management Group that does a lot of um, airport businesses in the, I think primarily in the North Carolina area. Adrian is the main gentleman there that we worked with and just kind of talked through what Raleigh, what Raleigh Brewing was about. Raleigh Brewing is also is a minority owned business. I am the female president of Raleigh Brewing and a strong leader, you know, in the, in the community. And uh, Adrian also being minority owned was, that was, um, that was a common thread that we just really initially sewed together. We had, we just gained a lot of respect for one another. He talked about what he wanted to bring to RDU. And, and I really saw how Raleigh Brewing could bring a great spot for to, to vibrancy uh, for the area, bring a whole nother local thread. Obviously, having the stories in our beer and bringing those to RDU was exciting. And so we just started kind of really building out, you know, where and how we could fit that into the airport here and, you know, excited that it all came together. Well, Christy, I know that when I fly just as a, as a regular traveler, I love to try to stop at a brew pub at mm-hmm. whatever concourse I happen to be in at the time and try to find a local beer, hopefully one that I haven't had before, although that number is getting smaller <laughs> and smaller. And now RDU Flyers can do that too with Raleigh Brewing. It's right in the name, right? So Raleigh Taproom opened in Terminal 2 just a little over a year ago. And obviously the last year has been a very interesting time in aviation <laughs> and, and in, uh, you know, beer bars and restaurants as well and breweries what has that experience been for you guys like so far Uh, yeah so we opened in rdu in january of 2020 and uh it was only a couple months after where there was the state home mandate you know that was put in place pretty much like march april affected march april and then into may actually into may as well it's been you know interesting we do packaged beer so we have we have packaged beer so initially what is normally our portfolio where we have what's considered off-premise, which is grocery store sales, used to be about 40% of our sales. It switched immediately. Well, at the stay at home, when there was no bars and restaurants, it was 100% of our sales. Mm-hmm. But overall, those sales grow, went up over 60%, which is a huge difference in the way that you're packaging and the way that your brewery works. So to shift from keg beer to canned beer and how that you know whole operational works you know inside your organization is a big, that's a pretty big switch. So operationally for our actual brewery, that that's what changed. But then once the tap room opened up in RDU, of course, that was slow also as people were still trepidatious to get into the airport. Travel was still a little bit lighter. We just really worked with the team at RDU and uh, the, the folks that were working in the tap room to just kind of we use the time really just to grow a relationship because these folks were fairly new to to Raleigh Brewing, the people that were working at RDU, even though, you know, the tap room wasn't as busy as what it normally would have been. Now that now these employees that are working there are even stronger than they would have been, you know, had COVID never happened. So, you know, sure, as far as the <laughs> light at the end of the tunnel, there's that. Now, you know, when I go into the tap room and, uh, you know, the bartenders are quick to say, hey, I go in and I can meet and introduce myself to the customers that are there, which is kind of a neat, you know, unique taste as well or unique experience for the customers at uh, that are at the RDU airport to see me walking in and, I get to meet the owner of the actual brewery, which is kind of interesting. Of course, at first they don't believe it because I'm female, but um, eventually I'll show them a business card and, uh, you know, strike up a really good conversation. So we have, it's, it's been fun. And it's, I mean, it's evident that you're a leader and a collaborator and a note to all of our listeners. Christy's also the first woman to own a brewery in the state of North Carolina. So kudos to you Mm -hmm. on that. 
But going a little deeper into it, you mentioned this a little bit, your collaboration with Adrian, and RDU does have a focus on recruiting small minority-owned, women-owned businesses um, to expand their operations at the airport. Can you talk a little bit about what advice you would give to someone that's interested in entering that space, along with your perspective about women in the industry? You know, like you said, you Mm -hmm. showed up and we're approaching (laughs) Women's History Month. So what advice would you give women entering or minorities entering into this space, both in the beer industry, but also in airport operations? I would say it's about showing up and being present. Bottom line in anything, in whatever job you are as a minority or not a minority, it's about delivering quality and consistent communication and commitment. So quality to the product, commitment to customer service, commitment to just delivering at a high level. And really, and that in the end is showing up. So it's about doing that. It's about being engaged when you can be engaged, not taking a step back, or going, you know, going for it. You don't know what the answer is unless you ask it, unless you ask the questions. And that's really what Adrian and I both did. When I think about how that relationship first started, it was about, you know, it was just about asking the questions and about seeing how we could move forward with this opportunity. So I think it's uh, in that fear that you have to just step, lean into and create opportunities. And that's what I would recommend to anybody that is looking into getting into craft beer or RDU operations. <laughs> well, as you know, no no matter your gender, your background, your creed, good beer is good beer, right? Yeah, that's so, right. That's right. <laughs> I my favorite my favorite Raleigh Brewing beer is the Toll. Mm-hmm. So the Imperial Stout. I think it's an oatmeal stout, right? That's correct. Oat, yeah, Imperial so Oatmeal Stout. Whenever somebody comes to the Raleigh Tap Room at RDU, they might see a beer called Pack Like. That's actually a, an RDU themed beer. Can you tell us a little bit about that one? That is correct. That's right. So when we received the opportunity to come into the RDU terminal, we immediately actually bought a lot these uh, light or these are uh, lagering tanks. Basically, they're twenty barrel. We bought two twenty barrel lagering tanks to manage for the capacity. We figured, you know, especially once we get out of COVID, the capacity is going to be at at a premium. So we bought these lagering tanks with the expectation to bring to the terminal a beer that is easy drinking, sessionable, you can have more than one, but also, you know, packs a really great flavor. So we created um, uh, this American light lager that is called Pack Light. It's kind of tongue in cheek as far as packing light and also take, you know, the carry on suitcases that a lot of people like to take nowadays. But then also we are the uh, city of the Wolfpack. So There is a little bit of that in there, but primarily, definitely focused on airport travel, packing light, and also a a very nice, flavorful session beer. That's pretty cool. I mean, not too many airports can say that we've got our very own beer, right? Doing business at the airport, we're guessing you enjoy traveling as well. What are some of your places to fly and visit? Well, we do like to tr- visit family because my fam- thankfully my family lives in Michigan, so we're able to travel back and forth from Marshall, Michigan, which is a small town in Michigan, but uh, go through Kalamazoo Airport. So I always have to do the whenever somebody says yeah. they're from Michigan, I have to do the mitt thing. <laughs> the right? mitten. That's right. That's right. It's on the lower left part of the mitten. Okay. But <laughs> there's that, and then Patrick's family is actually from Sweden, so we uh, unfortunately haven't been able to travel there this year, but we do every other year like to travel and visit his family which is from the north of sweden but sounds like we might have to add a non-stop to yeah. the list <laughs> exactly right now though because we haven't been able to travel very much recently i i'm craving a trip to the caribbean i want to go it's been a little over a year at rdu what have you found to be unique what's unique about operating at the airport what has surprised you yeah, it is interesting, the different beers that are being pulled out. Of course, definitely Pack Light is one of the number one sellers in the terminal. Oh, that's so cool. I yeah. didn't realize that. Yeah, it is. It's number one uh, It's number one typically every month. Hell Yes Ma'am, of course, is also another beer that, that people do like as well. That's our Belgian Gold, and it's a sure. 9.2%. And we do get some tool drinkers here as well. So there is a... In, I believe it. Mm-hmm, <laughs> there are some stout fans. What I notice just whenever I'm able to come and visit the terminal and visit some of the customers that are that are here, it's a whole new fan base. I mean, we're getting business travelers who come here every week who are really, you know, gaining a relationship with Raleigh Brewing, if only through the terminal, which is uh, which is unique and very interesting to me as well. So maybe it's like people who aren't from the area, and you're kind of like the the first thing they see mm-hmm. when they come when they step into North Carolina. That's fun. You're yep. like the front porch brewery. 
yeah. for the state. It's exactly. Kind of fun. In the terminal. And this is they they may not ever come to the actual brewery, but they have tasted our beer and it's exciting for them and they talk about it when they go home. We love that. And we <laughs> love that that's part of the experience to make that visit to RDU fun. And also we just want to celebrate and cheers you and Raleigh Tap Room and wish you the best. We so appreciate you joining us on the show today. Thank you very much. If you'd like some more information on Raleigh Brewing, you can go to RaleighBrewingCompany.com. Thanks, Christy. Cheers. Wow, so we covered a lot of miles again in this episode. And I'll tell you what, Mira, I am a little I'm a little thirsty after that interview. What about you? <laughs> Just a little. <laughs> As you can probably tell, even during a pandemic, the behind-the-scenes planning and operations at RDU, at least, haven't slowed down all that much. Exactly. And speaking of not slowing down, this podcast has taken off. It's been a bright light for us, and your positive feedback has been both welcomed and appreciated. So please keep those airmail questions coming. We definitely want to hear from you. If you've got questions or if there's a topic that you'd like to hear more about, please send it our way. You can send that email to communications at rdu.com. Yeah, and we hope you continue to share the podcast with your friends and family. Encourage them to subscribe. You can find The Flying Goal on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to the pods. Yes, and keep up with RDU, the latest happenings going on at the airport. Visit RDU.com or find us on social media using at RDU Airport. All right, see you next episode. Yes, please stay safe and well. 